are now listening to episode 32 of the Real Health Podcast with Dr. Taylor Crick. In this episode, Dr. Taylor covers glutathione, your master antioxidant and detoxifier. This episode has been sponsored by realhealthresource.com, your go-to resource for everything health, nutrition, and wellness. Be sure to like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter and Instagram, and of course, please visit our website at realhealthresource.com. All right, welcome to the Real Health Podcast. As always, I'm your host, Dr. Taylor Crick, bringing you the most cutting edge information available for real health today. And I'm really excited about today's topic because it is literally one of the most important health topics that is out there. And it's one that not very many people are familiar with or have heard of. And you know, you may have heard of, of different bits and different pieces of what we're going to talk about today. Like you may have heard that you should take antioxidants or, or maybe more importantly that you should eat things like berries or you should eat things that have high antioxidants because they help your body fight oxidation. Well, what we're going to talk about today is your body's master antioxidant. If you followed the show at all, you've heard us talk about toxicity and that toxins, the accumulation of toxins is really at the root of all or most disease processes today and your body has to be able to detoxify and that's so incredibly important. Well, what we're going to talk about today is also known as your body's master detoxifier. One of the most important topics or, or most you know relevant topics today is anti-aging, fighting things like, you know, neurodegenerative decline, like Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, brain fog, even uh, MS, even, you know, these neurodegenerative diseases, how can we fight those? How can we stave off aging? Well, this is also your body's master anti-aging compound. So what exactly are we talking about? That's your body's master antioxidant, master detoxifier, the king of anti-aging. This is a compound called glutathione. Okay, so glutathione, glutathione. If you were at our toxicity workshop within the last couple weeks, you know, if you're listening to this in real time, you've heard me talk about glutathione. If you've been to any of our workshops in the past, you've heard me talk about glutathione. If you've listened to any past podcast episodes, you've heard me talk about glutathione. So what is this molecule glutathione that is your body's master antioxidant and master detoxifier? Well, first, before we get into this, you know, if you're just joining us for the first time, like I said, my name is Dr. Taylor Crick. I am a chiropractic physician based out of Salt Lake City. But what we really focus on is the true cause of what causes somebody to, to not be well, to have sickness, to have disease, because we believe that health is your body's natural state. That is the way we were designed. That is what we were made for, is to be healthy. And so the only thing that can happen if health is our natural state, if we always have 100% health, the only thing that can happen is things can creep up that interfere with our body's natural, normal, God-given ability to be healthy and to express that health. So what we look at are really three different areas that interfere with the body's ability to be healthy. And, and this is really simplified. And the first one is, you know, it's physical, chemical, and emotional stress. But it's also looking at uh, your diet, your toxicity, your body's ability to detox. And then the last one, the most important one, is chiropractic. And chiropractic, you know, most people think, oh, yeah, I've, I've seen a chiropractor one time or two times. But chiropractic, the adjustment is, is not what chiropractic is. Chiropractic is a philosophy a science and an art all boiled down together. And the philosophy of chiropractic is really what can change your life and change the world. And it's the belief that, like I just said, that your body needs no help to heal. It only needs no interference. So as a chiropractor, what I look for in my patients is what is blocking their body's ability to heal. And that usually comes down to stress, physical, chemical, emotional stress. Now, the physical stress, that's subluxation of the spine, you know, interference in the spine and in the joint mechanics that literally causes uh, neurological changes and causes, you know, inflammation and causes interference to your body's ability to be healthy and well. That's physical stress. That one makes a lot of sense. But we also look 
look for chemical and emotional or mental stressors and remove those. So the chemical stressors, we talk about those all the time of where they're coming from. They're coming from our personal care products. They're coming from the air that we breathe. They're coming from the water that we drink. They're coming from our food supply. You know, all these different chemicals, all these toxins that get into the body and your body has to be able to detoxify those. Some of those are literally just, you know, straight up chemicals or metals or, or you know, periodic, you know, elements. They're elements that are in your body that your body does not have any use for. Lead as an example, mercury as an example, aluminum as an example, that there is no physiological process that requires those things. They're non-hormetic. They have no benefit at any time. So some of those your body needs to be able to detoxify. Some of the other ones your body you know, has a use for, but at the same time, they're toxic in the amounts that we're getting them. They're toxic as you know, byproducts from other, uh, other reactions going on inside your body. This can be things like you know, oxidation inside your body, inflammation. You know, all these things are, are helpful and, and necessary processes in the body. But when they become too much, when there's too much inflammation, when there's too much toxicity, there's byproducts that form that are also toxic. So your body also, you, you know, you need to be able to dump your bucket, but you also need to stop filling your bucket. If you've listened to past episodes, that's how we talk about toxicity as a bucket. And detoxing dumps your bucket, but then watching out for the exposures, minimizing the exposures actually stops you from filling up the bucket. So that is what glutathione helps your body do. I'm going to talk about a couple of the functions of glutathione, what it is, what it does, what you can do to make sure that yours is boosted. Okay, so glutathione, it's a protein and it's compi- comprised of three amino acids. There are three amino acids that make this protein up. They are cysteine, glutamate or glutamic acid, and glycine. Okay, so this is your body's master antioxidant, but it's different than other antioxidants. You know, you have other antioxidants like vitamins A, C, E, uh, selenium, zinc, CoQ10, astaxanthin. You know, you've got all these antioxidants that you hear a lot about today, but glutathione is different in the fact that it's intracellular, okay, so inside your cells. So if you picture your cells, you know, maybe you've... uh, been to one of our workshops and seen a drawing of the cell. But, you know, if you picture the cell, what they're really finding out today is that health is largely dependent on the cell. You have to fix the cell to get well. As my mentor, Dr. Papa, says all the time, you have to fix the cell to get well. And and that's really, really true. Your cells are the foundation. You know, you've got 75 trillion cells in your body. You've got heart cells, you've got brain cells, you've got muscle cells, you've got all kinds of different cells. But your your cells are really the foundation for your health. They're really a microcosm of how your overall environment is looking. If you've got sick, congested, unhealthy cells, toxic cells, you're going to have a sick, congested, inflamed, unhealthy body. And they've researched this. You know, they used to think that your DNA may, may determined everything. Right, you know, the human genome project, we've started learning all this stuff about genes and about DNA. Well, what they've found, two different inter- interesting things that they've found. So the DNA in your cell is found in what's called your nucleus. Okay, you may remember that from grade school or high school biology, but you know, very basic cell biology, all of your cells have a nucleus, and that nucleus has the DNA in it. The DNA creates the RNA, which creates the proteins, and the proteins become you. Okay, so it makes sense that the DNA is dictating and running the show. But what they found is when they take the DNA out of a cell, it still continues to function. Okay, and when they've also, they've done another study with DNA of cells, you know, they've taken the DNA of cancer cells and put it into a healthy cell. And they think, oh my gosh, this cell is going to turn cancers. No, the opposite is true. The, the nucleus actually turns healthy. The DNA actually turns healthy when it's put into a healthy cell. And vice versa, you know, they took healthy DNA, a healthy nucleus, and put it into a cancer cell. And that nucleus, that DNA became cancerous. So it's not the DNA that dictates everything. It's actually the health of of the cell. And that's why glutathione is so critically important because it is an intracellular 
antioxidant. It's really, really important for your cells to create enough energy. And it's really, really important to make sure that toxins aren't accumulating inside your cell. One of the most important things you can do for the health of your cell is make sure that it's creating enough energy, which glutathione is going to help with. I'll talk about that in a minute. And make sure that it's not inflamed, that it's not toxic, that it's not congested, that things can get across the cell membrane. Remember, the cell membrane is kind of like the door in and out of the cell. Okay, and so if that door is locked, the good stuff is not getting in and the bad stuff is not getting out. You know, picture if you were at a uh, crowded restaurant or crowded bar and a fire went off and they lock the doors. The good guys, the firemen can't get in and you can't get out. Worst possible situation. That is what happens in our cells when things can't get in and can't get out. So glutathione is a little bit different than other antioxidants because it's intracellular. And the other thing that it can do is it can actually work synergistically, which means work together with other antioxidants and help them actually work better. Okay, so glutathione, your body produces it from those three building blocks. As you age, like a lot of processes, your body's ability to to produce it actually goes down. Okay, so it's also... So say you have your, you know, your bucket, once again, of glutathione. Okay, so how much glutathione your body produces, that's going to be determined by your, by your genes and by you know, past experiences that, and things that, that are going to determine how efficient your body is at producing glutathione. So you can't really change that. That is genetic. But then when you're fighting a chronic disease, They've been able to measure glutathione levels and show that people who are fighting a chronic disease have significantly lower levels of glutathione. Okay, so what am I talking about? Like an acute infection, you're going to be lower on glutathione slightly, but more, more so the chronic diseases. People with diabetes, people with HIV or AIDS, they've done a lot of studies on, on people with HIV and AIDS who are, who are known for having chronically low levels of glutathione. Cancer autoimmune disease, heart disease, neurodegenerative diseases like Parkinson's or Alzheimer's, or when a person has chronic toxicity like heavy metal toxicity, chronic inflammation, or even a a leaky gut. Because your glutathione is being used to fight the damage. So if you're eating the standard American diet, like the last podcast episode, we talked about seven food additives that have been scientifically proven and shown to cause leaky gut. Okay. And so when they cause leaky gut, they increase toxicity, they increase inflammation, they increase autoimmune responses. Those people that are eating those foods, they're going to be lower in glutathione because glutathione is what your body's going to use to neutralize those processes. The other ones, you know, the big ones are, are things like Parkinson's and Alzheimer's. You know, when I hear this, you know, you ask everybody what, what is their number one concern? What is their number one fear? You ask, especially the elderly, their number one fear is not dying. Their number one fear is losing their mind, losing their brain. You know, Parkinson's or, excuse me, rather, Alzheimer's is now being called type 3 diabetes. They're starting to learn a lot more about the mechanisms behind this. Uh, and and it, it's really something that can be prevented and can be avoided through keeping your diet on point, through keeping inflammation down, through detoxifying, getting heavy metals out of your brain cells, out of your tissue cells, especially the neurological tissues. You know, I heard recently that it's going to take four, it takes four generations for your, for your lineage to naturally detox out lead. Uh, You know, so talking about Flint, Michigan and things with heavy metals, you know, if you're just going to naturally let those things get out of your body through, you know, and you pass them along to your kids, it's going to take four generations before they get out. We just ran a toxicity test on a patient last week. She tested positive for DDE. Okay, DDE, DDT, you know, those were banned in 1972. So a lot of these toxins accumulate, and when they accumulate, they start causing symptoms similar to, you know, memory loss, brain fog, the early signs of, you know, autoimmune conditions, things like that. And then glutathione gets used to neutralize the oxidation and neutralize the free radicals. 
So making sure that your glutathione stores you know, stay full is really, really important. Through some of the things that we're going to talk about, uh, food stuff that you can do and, and you know, exercise and, and doing all the right lifestyle things that are going to keep your glutathione uh, pr- production up, but also decreasing some of the other uh, lifestyle things that will deplete your glutathione. Okay, so the main function of glutathione is to protect your cells, your DNA, and then your mitochondria, which help produce your body's energy from oxidative damage. It's also going to play a central role in defense from infection, free radicals, and many, many carcinogens, including radiation. Glutathione, or it's also called GSH, it also detoxifies xenobiotics or foreign compounds like chemicals and toxins. It actually plays an important role in phase one and phase two of liver detoxification. Okay, so you've heard us say before maybe that you know a healthy liver detoxifies 99% of toxins on the first pass, and there's there's you know phase one and phase two of liver de- detoxification, and both have to be firing. Uh, on all cylinders for your body to actually get rid of any of these toxins. And most of our bodies that are overwhelmed to the point where we are not getting rid of all these toxins. Most, I mean, that's 95% of people. And unless you're stimulating it, you're not getting rid of all the toxins because we live in such a toxic world. But glutathione plays an important role in phase one and phase two. And, you know, it's found in the highest concentration in the liver cells, which is no surprise that, that that's where where it's at. Uh, it actually participates directly in the destruction of reactive oxygen compounds like superoxide, one of the most dangerous oxidation byproducts, one of the most dangerous free radicals. It participates directly in those. But it's not just an antioxidant. It also, it depends on, its synthesis depends on and works very closely with something called ATP, and that's your body's main source of energy. So low glutathione levels, when somebody gets a chronic disease, when they've got chronic inflammation, when they've got something like HIV, AIDS, fibromyalgia, they've got you know brain fog or, or uh, you know leaky gut, and all these things that really, they all have different names. But in reality, they're all just, you know, 21st century diseases that we have today from accumulation of toxins, from inflammatory diets, from crappy, crappy spines. Uh, They're all pretty much the same thing. And they all are associated with low levels of glutathione. Low energy is associated with low levels of glutathione. And that's because it's literally being used to fight disease. Your energy, your cellular energy is literally going towards disease fighting processes. So it's a, it's a good thing in the long run when you're drained, when you're tired, because it means that your body's energy is going towards something else. But at the same time, we want to look for what is causing that, what is stimulating that so that we can address the cause, correct the cause, and get your body back functioning the way that it's supposed to with abundant energy, with abundant health, with abundant life. And that's really what we see when we address these things. So, you know, low levels of GSH, we already went through this, are associated with inflammatory conditions, HIV, AIDS, cancer, uh, autoimmune, neurodegenerative diseases. And the last one that I want to talk about and just wrap up with as far as what it's associated with, why it's it's so important. The last one is it's pretty heavily associated with things like autism, like kids being on the autism spectrum. And, and you know, I, I, somebody was talking about this recently, a speaker that I heard, and they're talking about, you know, why can one child have every vaccine and not have any reaction? And why can another child, you know, immediately have a reaction right away? And the reason is because of this thing called glutathione. Okay, their, their toxic buckets are overloaded. Now, their glutathione stores come from mom, but also if mom's toxic, things like lead, you know, like that I just talked about, that's generational toxicity. Great book out there called Generational Toxicity that you can look into if you want to learn more about this. But we very, very positively, absolutely pass our toxins down to our kids. We've, we've seen the umbilical cord studies. You guys have heard me talk about these where they found several hundred toxins in umbilical cord blood. They find heavy metals. They find all these things that are being passed down. And so a baby right away might be lower on glutathione. And if they're not, 
one of the things that depletes glutathione that is known, known, known to deplete glutathione that we give to our kids, Tylenol. Acetaminophen, best known brand name, Tylenol, depletes glutathione. Then they go in for their routine vaccination with different things like aluminum and formaldehyde. And, you know, this is not controversial. It's not what we're talking about today, but you can look up the ingredients uh, on cdc.gov. But they go in and they get these shots that are designed to stimulate the immune system, to insult the immune system so that there's an immune response. Well, guess what? If your glutathione levels aren't high enough, that can lead to an adverse reaction. So glutathione, incredibly, incredibly important. So what the biggest mistake that you can make right now is turn this podcast off and say, okay, I got to go to the store. I got to get me some glutathione, right? Uh, And that's, you know, something that you might think is true. Until you learn that glutathione, you cannot take it, okay? You can't take it. First off, I wouldn't even recommend that you take it. I'm I'm very uh, wary about taking anything that your body produces on its own because we have what's called feedback loops, which is like – you know, it, it's like the uh, the economy. When there's not enough money, it, it's a lot more complex than this, but when there's not enough money, they print more. And when there's not enough money, they print more. And when there's not enough money, they – you know, and, and it's – they can't just always keep printing it and keep printing it and keep printing it. And same thing with your hormones. When there's not enough thyroid hormone, your body produces more. When there's not enough adrenal hormones, your body produces more. When there's not enough testosterone, your body produces more. And it's a feedback loop. Now, if that feedback loop gets broken, we start putting in testosterone, we start putting in melatonin, we start putting in thyroid hormone, your body thinks, well, I've got enough. I don't need to make any more. And it stops the production. So it breaks that feedback loop, really messes things up. But glutathione has just also been shown not to be very well absorbed and not to really boost your levels of glutathione. This is something also that can be measured. You know, we do the tests in here, oxidative stress, blood tests that can measure glutathione. It's not that expensive, but you can find out where you're at. Um, But the other thing, too, is there are some supplements that may help boost Glutathione. So a, a couple of those are turmeric, you know, curcumin. Curcumin has been shown to boost your body's production. Uh, vitamin D, there's some research to show that vitamin D can help boost your body's glutathione. So, you know, honestly, look, looking at 90% of, of people, uh, vitamin D and glutathione, taking those two are going to boost your energy, are going to make you feel quite a bit better. Now, there's other supplements that people should be on, like omegas, uh, like a probiotic. Uh, next episode, we're going to talk about actually uh, diet and supplement and exercise variation and getting variety because, you know, how can you take all these supplements all the time? Well, you, you, you can't and you shouldn't, I don't think. But anyway, some others, uh, alpha-lipoic acid is a really good one. Glutamine, glutamate is the building block of of glutathione, but glutamate is turned to glutamine in the brain, um, and then that's a direct precursor for glutathione. It, it, it's a lot of times not very well absorbed. And, and then cysteine, you know, glycine, glutamate, and cysteine are the building blocks. And by taking these building blocks, there's a lot of research, uh, a lot of peer-reviewed research on taking glycine and cysteine especially, and those being able to boost glutathione. And, and the one, the, the version that I would say is the best is called n acetyl cysteine. On the shelves, a lot of times it's NAC. Or if you're a patient in our office, some of you have had lab work and shown that you you are deficient and you actually need more N-acetylcysteine for an increased glutathione demand possibly. Uh, so that's a couple things that you can do. Now, supplement-wise, you always want to start with your food. But since we're talking about it, I'm going to continue talking about the, the version that we use in the office because we do have a supplement that supports healthy intra and extracellular glutathione levels and has been shown to be really powerful and really effective. Uh, One of the reasons I like this supplement, first off, is I just went up and visited their labs. I know the research that they put into this, but I also know I hear from doctors out in the field that are using their products and they're seeing incredible results. Okay, so this isn't the company that has the best marketing or the best advertising or the the best, the cutest label at Sprouts or something. This is the company that I know of that doctors are using and getting amazing results. So that's why we recommend it. It's called Systemic Formulas and the supplement is called G-Cell 
and it stands for, for intracellular glutathione increaser. So a couple things that are in here, just a, a variety of vitamins, nutrients, minerals. But the biggest ones, you know, there's vitamin C, there's magnesium, there's B vitamins, there's zinc, manganese, folate, chromium, vitamin D, you know, not huge doses, doses of these, but all these things that work synergistically together to help your body boost glutathione. Now, here's the glutathione propi- proprietary blend that's in here. It's N-acetylcysteine, ribose, L-taurine, L-glutamine, S-acetyl, L-glutathione, R-alpha lipoic acid, turmeric, milk thistle, another one that's been shown, cardamom, green coffee bean extract, cacao, green tea, quercetin. So, you know, there's a lot of stuff in here. I'm not going to read through all these. I, I just did, actually. But... um. All those things have been designed in their lab to work synergistically with your body's ability to produce its own glutathione. So if you're really low, that's something that you might need to look into G-cell from systemic formulas. But here's where I would start. I always like to start with the most conservative approach first. Start with your diet. So what are the foods that provide the most glutathione-stimulating Uh, GSH boosting benefits. The first one, the one that has been shown to have the most effect, the biggest effect is actually grass-fed, non-denatured whey protein. Okay, so whey protein, that's why we talk about it as a superfood. You know, we're not huge on dairy. Uh, We kind of ride the fence with raw dairy and, you know, raw dairy can be a superfood. Once it's pasteurized, I don't think that it's the best thing for a person. But whey is actually very, very different. First off, it's usually it's casein free, it's lactose free, and it's just whey. Whey is the a protein that comes from cow's milk, and this has been shown to be the best way to boost glutathione. Okay, so it has to be non denatured, which means it's never been heated. It's been cold pressed. And it has to be organic, and it really has to be from grass-fed sources. It has to be high quality. You've heard us talk about that in the past, that your animal products should always be the highest quality because you're, you're, the way that the animal was raised is going into what you are buying. Okay, and so whey protein, it has to be raised well. Okay, whey is a superfood that's also been shown to stimulate metabolism, and weight loss. And it's also been shown to be the most bioactive, most bioavailable source of protein, meaning you're getting the most benefit from the protein. You take 20 grams of whey versus 20 grams of a plant-based protein or a pea protein or a casein protein, which I do not recommend. Uh, You take 20 grams of whey, you're getting the most benefits from it. So it's incredibly beneficial. Even if somebody is non-dairy, we'll still put them on whey protein. Unless they have a philosophical objection to eating animal products, whey protein is the best thing that you can do. What we carry, the brand that we carry in our office is called Super Vital Foods. It's New Zealand cows. It's a company that once again likes systemic formulas based here in Utah. Um, But it's grass-fed New Zealand cows. It's non-denatured. It's non-heated. It's grass fed organic. It is, there's no sugar, there's no additives, there's no colorings, there's no preservatives. It's just really high quality stuff. The next thing, the next best thing, why these foods are so, so good for you is eating a lot of sulfur containing foods. Okay, sulfur containing foods are going to help with help boost your body's glutathione, okay? Sulfur-containing foods help stimulate phase one and phase two detoxification of the liver. So these are also good foods for detox, but the mechanism of why they're good foods for detox is because they can actually boost glutathione. Okay, so what are foods that contain sulfur? Uh, Cruciferous vegetables are the first and the biggest ones. That's your broccoli, that's your Brussels sprouts, that's cauliflower, that's kale, that's arugula. Those things are so incredibly important. And we talk about them all the time because they're really, 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 really good for you. They're high in fiber. They're high in phytonutrients. They're high in everything that your body wants and needs. Now, with all those cruciferous vegetables, it is a good idea to lightly steam them, to lightly steam broccoli, uh, you know, cauliflower, Brussels sprouts, at least. You know, they're pretty fibrous to eat raw. Broccoli and cauliflower, you can pull it off. Brussels sprouts, I don't know about that one. But lightly steam them at least or cook them. Uh, But, you know, kale, arugula, some of those you can have raw. 
Here's the other sulfur-containing foods, though. Raw garlic is a huge one. Raw garlic, raw onions, leeks, or shallots. You know, some of those other compounds that have uh, that, that come from the same food families, but they are strong flavors. We always talk about strong flavors and bright colors because the things that make the flavor strong and make the colors bright are things that are really, really good for you. Flavonoids, uh, polyphenol, things that are really, really good for you that are in these foods make the colors bright and make the, the flavor strong. The other thing, okay, so, so grass-fed whey is a big one, is sulfur-containing foods. You know, just because of the amount that you can eat, I'd almost say if this was going to be a food pyramid, those would be the foundation. The sulfur-containing vegetables, the green foods, uh, garlic, onions, leeks, shallots, that would also include things like turmeric or, or curcumin, um, you know, in with those foods that are going to boost it. The other, the next uh, step up on the, the food pyramid there would be your high quality animal products other than just whey, but, you know, pastured or grass fed red meats and organ meats contain a high level of alpha lipoic acid, which may help boost GSH and you know, especially things like liver meat. That would make sense, right? You eat liver. It's going to help your liver. It's going to give you all the building blocks for a healthy liver, help your body boost GSH or boost glutathione. Uh, free-range eggs that are pasture-raised, raw is best, but free-range eggs, eat the yolk. Those can help boost glutathione. And then other grass-fed, free-range, raw milk products. Okay, so GSH occurs in the highest concentrations in uncooked meats and raw milk and cheese, and it's almost non-existent when you get into pasteurized products. So if you're getting pasteurized, you know, you're, you're just not getting the benefit. You're eating raw or lightly cooked, you know, medium rare for your steak, and then raw cheeses. You can get raw milk here in Utah, uh, things like that are really going to help your body boost its own glutathione. But if you can't access those things, grass-fed meats, grass-fed cheeses, uh, free-range eggs, you can get those anywhere, and then sulfur-containing foods, those cruciferous vegetables, and then get yourself a high-quality whey protein make smoothies with it. But those are the things that you can do to keep your glutathione boosted. If you want to learn more, look this up. Dr. Oz has done bits on this. Everybody is really talking in my world. Everybody's talking about glutathione right now. And it's something that, that we've known about for a long time, but that we want to make sure it's boosted so that you're fighting oxidation, you're fighting any damage, any free radical damage, while also making sure that your body's filter, your liver, can detoxify toxins and get rid of them effectively and efficiently. So make sure you check the show notes if you want to find out all this information. Make sure you also go back into our past episodes, past podcasts, past YouTube videos, and you can see some of the results that people are experiencing from really checking out you know, what could be interfering with real health. And you can also learn some other things. We've got recipes. We've got you know, Pinterest boards. So make sure that you check those out. Look at our website. Follow our newsletters. And also go to iTunes and give us a rating and a review. We really appreciate that. Give us a five-star rating and give us a review of the things that you like about the show. If you have any future episodes you'd like to hear about, you'd like to learn about, feel free to send an email over. My personal email address is Dr. Taylor at wealignutah.com. Feel free to send me an email at any time and stay tuned for the next episode where we're going to talk about variety and variation, especially when it comes to your diet, but healthcare variety. Thanks for tuning in. Once again, this is a real health podcast and I'm your host, Dr. Taylor Crick. We'll talk to you guys next time. Thank you for listening to The Real Health Podcast with Dr. Taylor Crick. This episode has been sponsored by realhealthresource.com, your go-to resource for everything health, nutrition, and wellness. Be sure to like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter and Instagram, and of course, please visit our website at realhealthresource.com.